and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at NOT income. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my viewers that I would like to connect with you on a personal level. So if you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me. I'm very active on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you do start a LinkedIn account. It's very important for your professional image. I also have a Facebook page. Please like my Facebook page and you can connect with me on a personal level. You definitely want to connect with me on YouTube through the subscription. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so this way you're up to date and you could get in touch with me via my website and I do have a Twitter account. So, so what is annuity income? Basically once you get closer to retirement what you do is you'll take all your money okay you, you cash out all your stocks, your bonds, whatever you have assets in you'll take all your money and you invest you buy in annuity what is an annuity basically this annuity will give you the right to receive payments for the rest of your life or for 20 or 30 years so what you do is you know what i'm just gonna get out of the stock market get out of the bond market get out of the anything that's risky and buy an annuity okay so typically you can buy this from an insurance company the purchaser pay a fixed amount for the right to receive a future stream of payment. So today you might have, you know, $300,000. You invest everything. And what you do, the insurance company would say every year for life will give you $2,000. So you invest $300,000 with them and they'll give you $2,000. Now what happened is, what happened is the insurance company is going to invest this money. Okay, invest this money and earn, earn a return on it. So let's assume a taxpayer age 50 buys an annuity from an insurance company for 30,000. We call this the investment. This is the cost or your investment. This is what you did. You paid $30,000. So the insurance company will invest this money. Okay. Obviously that's what they do. They don't sit on it and cash value would accumulate. Cash value is abbreviated as CV. As cash value accumulate, that taxpayer does not recognize interest income. So when it accumulate, you don't, you know, when it goes up in value, when it accumulating return, you don't have any interest income until you take it out. Now, so for this, for this, for this example, in return, the taxpayer is to receive $500 per month for life starting age of 65. So this individual is 50 years old now, they put $30,000 away. Once they're 65, the insurance company will pay them $500. From the age 50 to age 65, the policy will accumulate cash, but you don't have to worry about that cash, okay? Let's assume after seven years, which is, you know, we are at 57, you did not reach 65 yet. The cash value, you will know what the cash value is, grew to 34, and the taxpayer decides to take $20,000 out. How is that? How do we treat this? Well, if the withdrawal is the less than the original investment, yes, the withdrawal is less than 30,000. Then this is considered ROC, return of capital, and this is a non-taxable event. If the withdrawal is greater than the original investment, but less than the increase in cash value, then you have a taxable interest income. So if you withdrew more than 30,000, but less than 34, the difference between them is interest income. Okay, now we're going to get to this table in a moment. Let's look at another example. Let's assume a taxpayer age 60 purchased an annuity from an insurance company for 90000 We call this the investment or we can call it the cost. She's to receive, so the, uh, the annuitant, this person is to receive $500 for life. Her life expectancy now, how long is this individual going to live? Well, she bought it at 60. Well, we can go to the IRS tables and they will tell us if you are 60... We're 60 here, 60 is da, 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 60 right here. 60 is right here. You expect to live 24.2 years. So you'd expect to live until you 84.2 years. This is what this is the expectancy. Okay. So what we say, we say the expected return is five hundred dollar times twelve times twenty-four point two. This is the expected return. Okay, you invested ninety thousand and the expected return is one forty five. What we do is we'll take the 90,000, your original investment, divided by the expected return of 145, 200, and we get a ratio. Let me just compute this ratio for you. 90,000 divided by 145,200. The ratio is 61.98, 61.98%. So this is the, remember, this ratio is the exclusion ratio. This is the ratio that you don't 
tax, okay, the exclusion ratio. Therefore, what you do, when you receive uh, you, per year, per year, you're, once you start to receive money, you're going to be receiving $6,000 per year. Why 6000 It's 500 times 12. What's going to happen? You're going to multiply this by 61.98. Maybe the rounding, it, may, it might make a difference, but let's find out. So we're going to take $6,000 times 61 oops, 0.6198. So you would exclude $3,000. $719. So you would exclude $3,719. This is the amount you exclude. Exclude, it's mean non-taxable. This is a return of capital. So what remained is $2,281 because you receive $6,000 per year. $3,719 is not taxable. The remainder is $2,281. It is taxable. Okay. Now, once you recover all your investment. Once the investment is recovered, what's your investment? Your investment is 90000 Once your investment is recovered, basically after 24.2 years, you would recover your investment. Then if you live over that amount and you receive $6,000 per year or for every payment, it doesn't have to be per year. Once you, once you live more than 24.2 for each $500, it's all taxable because you did recover your investment. Now the full amount is taxable. Okay. Assume that the taxpayer in example four, you receive annuity of 25.2, which is years, which is you're supposed to live, you, you're estimated to live 24.2, you live 25.2 25 years. It means you live 12 months longer than what they expected. Well, guess what? 12 months times $500 is $6,000. So the taxpayer would include $500 for every, for 12 times, basically. Okay, the total amount received each month in gross income, which is $6,000. Let's assume on the other hand, if instead the taxpayer dies after 36 months, 36 months is three years. They estimated you're gonna live 24.2, you only lived three years. Then guess what? You're gonna have a deduction. So your cost of the contract is $90,000. That's the cost of the contract. Cost previously recovered. So how much did you recover so far? Well, you received, so let me show you, this is the ratio. The ratio is 0. 0.6. Uh, one nine eight, and basically what happened is you already received thirty six payment times five hundred. That's eighteen thousand. So eighteen thousand. So you already recovered. So you get payment of eighteen thousand, of which eleven thousand one fifty seven is ROC. What happened? You still have this ROC return of capital. So what happened is this: you're going to have a deduction of seventy eight thousand eight forty three. That year because this is basically uh, you did not get your money back basically this is money that you invested in return of capital 78,843 all right and there is something called the uh, simplified method okay uh, the simplified method is required for annuity distribution from a qualified retirement plan qualified retirement plan it means it's like a 401k how do we compute this under a 401k example okay exclusion amount is investment in contract divided by the number of anticipated monthly payments. So you take your investment divided by some number. Okay, and this number is coming from here, from this table. The IRS will provide you this table. So let's work an example to see how it works. Andrea, age 62, received an annuity distribution of $500 for life from her qualified retirement plan beginning January 2018. Her investment in the contract, this is the investment. The, so what we do is we take the investment, she's 62, 62 is right here between 61 and 65 so the number from the table is 260 we're going to take the investment divided by 260 so what we're going to say is this 385 so the excludable amount this is non taxable is this amount therefore when she received 500 dollars she would exclude 385 and what's left is 115 that's the taxable amount. This is called the simplified method. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me. If you're studying for your CPA exam or studying for your college course, which is technically studying for your CPA exam, study hard. It's worth it. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck.